audio jungle. <laughs> Not because I'm trying to sell it, but it looks. <laughs> you know your style, eh? It's cool, man. <laughs> Love it. Yes. Oh, If it's not the first, not the second, but the third, Mr. Don't Watch Me Watch TV, my bad, I am on TV, so you're watching me. Ha 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 ha. Okay, bad joke, wow. I should stick to acting, right? Yeah, a lot of people would tell me to stick to presenting because they used to call me a bad actor, but now that I've improved in acting, a lot of, when I try other things, a lot of people tell me to stick to acting. Doesn't that suck being a creative? Sucks, right? Because a lot of people want to box you. If you're a writer, they want you to stay writing. You can't do something else. I think that is total bullshit. But anyway, let's begin. Are you guys good? Yeah. Are you sure, sure? Sure, sure, sure. Are you guys good? Yeah. Okay, you know, the whole... For us to do this, guys, we just want to create a network of young creatives and filmmakers in KZN so that we can open a space for dialogue, we can open a space for collaboration, and open a space to just talk about the things that we don't usually talk about when we're on set, right? Because we know these production companies are owned by, hey, yeah. yeah, and we can't speak to them about other things and difficulties that we face as cast and crew, and uh, that sucks. So this is a space for us to say, you know what, fuck the system, because <laughs> I genuinely feel like that. I feel like the system feels like we're working for them when it should be the other way around. Yes, the system should be working for us. Yeah. I deserve a round of applause for that. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. So you know what, we need an icebreaker. So we figured that uh, we're gonna play strip poker so that um, if you get an answer wrong, you strip. I'm kidding, that's another bad joke. I should really stick to acting. Uh, we're gonna do speed dating, guys. So for like 60 seconds, you go to someone that you don't know and you introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Raphael, I'm an actor, and I'm a writer, and I'm trying to do an animation short film. Just for us to get to know each other. Are you guys cool with that? Are uh, you not? Uh, you have no choice, eh? So, can we start that in the next five seconds? Five, four, three, two, one. I'll start. Let's go. She doesn't even get what I do. She's just happy I'm on TV. Otherwise, we're not going to get Yes, I've been around for like this 11 years okay. and um, my dream is to be a director uh, of my own productions. Okay. So I want my stories to be heard out there, so that's my dream. Well, my dream is to bring those stories to life. <laughs> well, I'm uh, 23 years old. I wish this was my place. <laughs> this is my place. Lovely yeah. to meet you. you I'm, I'm single, eh? <laughs> yeah, just no, speed that's... dating. You're worrying me, you're coming to speak to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
بدین دل علی
No, we're supposed to be talking to each other. No, but I'm showing you something about myself, you know? You're gonna get some food now. Young entrepreneurs to Vera Clothing Line. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, Turban Lyrics. Hey, what up, bro? Stand up, Chief. What's going on? Hey. Hey. We always need to support our young entrepreneurs, right? Keep pushing, guys. Keep pushing. All protocol officially observed. So now we can begin. I'd like to call upon our first speaker. Tony, where's Tony Montana? Is running late? Ah, oh, what's changed? <laughs> uh, and on stage, I've got three amazing people. Narina! <laughs> Chanel! <laughs> Tunzi! I'll let them introduce themselves, what they do, what they're gonna talk about. Less pressure for me, more pressure for them. So take over, guys. Tunzi can go first. <laughs> you will like. I knew it. Hey, Sangwana, hello, everybody. Hey. Yeah, Sangwana. Yeah. 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 I wish I had somebody to 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 <laughs> My name but, is Mtunz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try to speak English everybody. Venek. <laughs> anyway, my name is Mtunz. Um, those of you who have the program uh, have already seen. Um, I am the first assistant director or first AD. Hello. Um, <laughs> oh, pops. What's up? Um, slash, recently I'm now directing. Um, I got an opportunity to start directing um, as of last year. It's a dream I've been pursuing for a while. So yeah. that's good. So I'll be speaking about that. Um, even though it's not on the agenda, the directing part, I'm going to speak about uh, uh, those of you who have that package on DSTV. 
the premium one and then the other one where you pay, where you pay 399 uh, yes compact uh, we'll know the show that's just been taking i thought it was just our province or maybe the hostels or you know or only the zulu people but i saw a video on social media i saw some white people saying did you watch it it was Stella. <laughs> You know, it, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to be speaking a bit more about that when I get a chance to speak. Uh, I'll be more brief than I am as I'm introducing myself. So I'm going to be speaking about that. Uh, yeah, I, I won't reveal more. So I'm going to be speaking about that. Thank you. Just one, two, three. Just intro. Just intro. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hey. Can you hear me? Yes. No, okay. Close that to the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's my good kid. Boom, boom. I am Narina. Uh, and I'm a creative person. I'm an art director. And I am currently on in Beirut. Um, yes, Yeah, I'm creative. I'm a solutions person. <laughs> but I'll kind of elaborate on it more. However, that's not what Zuko briefed me on. Um, but we'll get into that later. Hi everyone, um, I'm Chanel, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I'm Chanel, um, I'm a writer, director, storyteller. Um, I am currently working as, a, as an assistant editor on Mbewu as well and uh, working on a feature documentary film. Um, I'm going to be talking about my experiences um, trying to uh, sort of come up and uh, create, like sort of build a creative career um, and build a sustainable creative career, uh, <laughs> specifically in a difficult town uh, like Durban, city like Durban, um, and also the, what, what it's like being a woman in the industry. Yeah. Okay, uh, the, the other person uh, is still not here. Uh, I heard he's uh, stuck in traffic. Uh, <laughs> I should really stick to acting. I got bad jokes. Yo, okay, guys, please give him a round of applause, please. Hey, look, it's Blue, Blue Man. Give him a round of applause. Louder one. There we go. Our fellow creatives, they're doing amazing things in the industry. Hey, Tunzi, shout out to that Eo Stella. Props. Double props for that. Double props for that. He's working hard. He was the AD, one of the meanest ADs I've ever met. Yes, so Tunzi. Yo, 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 yo. You want, me, you want me to start swearing? Okay, guys, I'll start swearing now. Okay, can you shut the fuck up? I'm like, oh, okay. This is hectic, <laughs> but in I, he's very, very good at what he does. And I didn't even know he was working on a concept like a hostel, which shows that we must never stop dreaming. As creatives, we must always create, right? So for now, straight to the program. I'd like to call up Tony Montana. Tony, come up. Yeah. And let him introduce himself. <laughs> Tony. Chaman yeah. Wagwa. <laughs> Short intro, Tony. Who you are, what you are here to do, or protocol observe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, my name is Tony Kholak and I'm here to talk about creative industries. <laughs> Short and sweet. And Tony, um, we say that we are, we are being real today. So no bullshit, you must give us the facts, even stuff that people are scared to talk about, about our creative industries. Yes. And according to the schedule, you are the first one to speak. So round of applause for Tony Koroke. Let him be the first one to speak, yeah? Hold the mic like me. Like how? Oh, okay. Uh, this feels like an ambush, but anyway, I'll take it. Um, in, well, in terms of the creative industries, and more especially in our country, we are faced with a lot of challenges, and most of them 
is that we don't have proper representation. Yes, sir. And in, in us have, not having proper representation, that means that we are, we are bound to be exploited in one way or the other. Yeah. And more than anything else, then you have your, what I call labor brokers, which are the agents or your managers, who will always come in between and try to be that voice that represents you legally or otherwise. But in most cases, sometimes those are the people that you you really cannot trust. So the best way would be for the creative sector to organize itself and make sure that you have a proper structures like in any other industries and in other sectors where they have organized formations, they have unions, they have people who stand there for them, people who make sure that they are heard, they are protected in one way or the other. Um, and more than anything else, it is, it is important as creatives to make sure that we all, mo we all the time sharpen our skills. Um, you find that sometimes, you know, um, to speak the honest truth, you find people who don't deserve to be where they're supposed to be. So, what does that mean? It's either the person Maybe it comes from school, but it's not sharpen the, the the skill that much, or maybe they're just not talented. We don't know how they got there. Uh, in, in their industry, they talk about couch what what something. I don't know why. Couch yeah, <laughs> couch casting or something like that, uh, or favorite or whatever it is. But the challenge then is to say, how then do we make sure that we take South African talent series and we make sure that we put the best talent, the cream of the crop out there instead of putting the compromised South African talent out there. Mm. So those are the challenges that we, and it also, it doesn't only come to acting, we're talking about uh, whether it's been directing, producing, um, makeup artist, wardrobe, and so on. Um, and more than anything else is to say, since now Durban, or let's say KZN, is embracing the film culture, where are we as creatives in that space? What are we doing? Where's our voice? Why are we having bureaucrats making decisions for us? Why are we not stepping in there and saying, hold on, since now you are making the space conducive for us, and we thank the KZN government for such initiative. It's a beautiful thing to create a space where we can be able to thrive and make sure that you know we can unleash the creative economy within KZN. But then the problem is that now your voice is not there. You're not giving direction. You're not saying where the problem is, where the challenges are, so that when they plan, they can plan better. Yeah. Or they must plan with you so that when the problem comes to us, then we know exactly what it is, how to deal with that problem. Maybe with that, let me not go too, for too long. I don't know how many minutes I have. I will break it there. Oh, they say I can go on. Okay, fine. And then it also now, we stretch it to, to if we're saying that we're partnering with government, private sector as well, um, and see how we can have a partnership that doesn't only speak over us, but speaks with us, to us about us that um, we have the Durban Film Commission we have the film we have the Durban is it film office some sometimes we we get confused of who's who and what are they doing because they both talking film but how are they talking film why is the office there what is the I mean what is the role what is the actual role of the office and what's the actual role of the Commission Sometimes I realize that you know most of most of us as, as filmmakers or um, filmmakers around Durban, they don't quite really understand where to go to to ask for money, to ask for funding, or for help. To say, okay, I want to shoot here, I want to block the whole street here. You know, sometimes they don't know where to go to. But those institutions are the institutions that are supposed to come through and help us. And uh, more than anything else, now we're going into structure. Do we have infrastructure to welcome films in KZN? So the things that we should talk about. Do we have enough talent of great quality to welcome films here? 
if, for instance, let me say, if we have um, an international an international movie coming down to Durban, can we be able to handle it as Durban filmmakers since the film culture has been opened up to us? We know that Cape Town does that almost every week, every month. Um, but you know, sometimes it's compromised. You, they sometimes will bring talent from outside. They'll bring talent from the States to come and do, or from London or for Germany, wherever they come from, to come and do production. But with KZN, maybe the thinking must be different. So that the local also benefit from whatever is happening within the culture of film in KZN. To say, if you bring them here, how many of the local talent, the best, the cream of our local talent, can we put in that production? Being it in crew, being it in, 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 in acting, or producing, and so on and so forth. Um, do we have infrastructure in terms of equipment? There are people who work with, uh, with equipment, who may hire out equipment and so on, you know. Where are we in terms of that space? And what is our input into that? Are we asking the right questions? Are we asking, are we demanding the right funding for those kind of things? Or are we only wanting to be famous and be in front of the, the screen? Because we should be at the position where we also own means of productions. We should be in a position where we say, that studio, Imlazi or wherever it is, it is owned by so and so, and there are so many productions that are happening at that place. So, so the thinking also, our thinking as well, has to change in terms of how we look into these things. I know he's doing he's doing a, a hostel right now. Um, I don't know how much of, 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 of problems you you are facing with in terms of infrastructure, in terms of making sure that you know. You get, I mean, sometimes with the production that we're doing, we get the stuff coming from, from Johannesburg. And sometimes I ask myself, is it necessary? Is there no one who can do that here, really? Even at a smaller scale, you know? Some of the things are like very petite that you're thinking, we don't have, we don't have to wait for Johannesburg to send these things down here. Surely somebody can do that. So in terms of that, is it the, I, I would like to look into development, the thinking, the, 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 the thinking towards what has to be created. There's also platforms that are coming on now, the digital platforms. Um, what is the thinking? What is our thinking around that? What are we doing towards that? Is there any TV channel that we're coming up with on online? Or are there any uh, opportunities that we're exploiting and more especially coming from the Department of Communications in terms of this thing that they're pushing of the digital migration? Where are we? How are we organizing ourselves to make sure that we get there? Yes. And I think with those few words, and I say thank yes. you very much. For, for yes. Yes. Absolutely. Round of applause for Tony. Yes. That was amazing, right? Yes. Guys, uh, the bar is over there in Natan Puzi, Puzan Bafetu. Drink, but make sure you don't get drunk if you're driving home. Otherwise, there's always Uber, right? So, Nyan Kutaza, guys. Order, eat, drink, and let's have some fun. But anyone with questions for Tony? Yeah. Going once? Okay, there we go. Hey, sorry, the mic can't. The mic can't. So, uh, Samanani, uh, my question for Tony is as um, leaders, Guys, I broke this thing. I think I broke it. I might have broken it. Okay, yeah. So, as leaders of um, the generation that precedes us, coming up, looking up to um, the guys that have been doing this and doing it great. Sometimes um, we have this thing of um, not knowing the structures. How would you advise any of us here that want to go knock? into doors not necessarily with you just like peers how is the best way for us to approach possible mentors so we can go to them and say listen i'm a writer i haven't done anything and because i know if i inbox you on instagram you'll think ah here's another groupie <laughs> you know coming up so what's the best way is it going to things like this 
Then coming up on a one-on-one -on -one handshake, is it emails, is it writing letters? How do we get mentors that will guide us? Because we need that guidance. Um, I feel that in Durban, what we lack is a continuation thing. So everyone who's older, once they get to that level, there's a, there's a gap, there's a break in that now they're inaccessible to me as the beginner trying to break into the... So I want to get to Mtunzi, who's now Daniel Ostella. How do I come up and I say to you guys, listen, please, guide me, you know, without going the couch casting route. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would like to make it uh, like a personal thing. When, when I, I, prefer, I prefer to go to a person so that someone can look into my eyes and see the passion in my eyes and see my heart. If you inbox, it becomes very like, because uh, you don't know. Get like 50,000 followers, and then people start inboxing and it's down a bit fun. But um, with the personal experience, what happened with me was that um, I was doing hijack stories and we were invited to Cannes. It's my first international movie that took me out of South Africa into, into the world. And there, then I met the guy who. Oh, sorry. Oh, then I met the guy who directed. Um, uh, the samurai and really cool and I went to him because it was my favorite movie at the time and I went to him and I told him that you know what this is who I am this is where I come from this is what I do this is what I want to do these are my dreams I also want to direct and do something like this but I'm looking into like doing something more African and so on and so on and so forth and then he asked me who my agent is and I told him who my agent was and then obviously then it was just me being a fan and being excited but obviously he saw something in me and uh, when he did um, the blood, when he did blood diamond, he looked for me. He called my agent and said, "I want to put that guy on, whom I met in Cannes, and so on and so forth." So that, to me, was a great thing. So I would encourage, and, and, and you know, I know most of the time, sometimes writing is also important. People like to read stuff. And most especially people who are a little bit older, they like to read. You know, you write something, something that is very touchy, you know, get to the point, speak to about exactly what you want to do, how you want to do it, why you want to do it, and why do you think that person must be your mentor? And then you take it from there. And if you meet them on the stage, it's like, hey, I'm the guy who sent you that email. But in most cases, because we don't have proper structures, but spaces like these and gathering like this, we need to encourage them and also invite those old people. I mean, the, the older generation, not old people, sorry. The older generation to come in and try to mingle with us so that we can ask them these things and maybe one or two can get a mentor. Who knows, you know? Thank you. <laughs> invite those old people, Chief. <laughs> Any more questions? One more? I'll take one more. Okay, there we go. Uh, someone I'm, um, Putuami, yeah, we, we are so concerned, a lot, you know, school, 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 um, so heads off to you and your generation because it is, 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 because of the efforts of the work that you are doing, you know, and what I'd like to ask is, is maybe a comment, but also, I'm sort of posing a, a, a question or a proposition of what you are talking about regarding structures, you know, for Durban Film, uh, the Durban Film Office, KZM Film Commission, means of production, um, us being able to have, uh, control the means of production. So KZN, like Cape Town, like any, most of the provinces in South Africa, we have a migrant labor system so most of the things are around the, the economics of how we as a country have been positioned for long, you know, and how to reverse the tide where there's a lot of talent from KwaZulu Natal, that Zekoli, most of them, you know, and uh, that idea of 
mentorship and building capacity sometimes is um, sort of uh, neutered or like it's it's cut off because they're not this side, you know. And the point that I'm trying to go to more in, in highlighting that is when you do start having our production companies in particular, how do we reverse the tide of doing the very same things, the exploitative um, things that the industry at large has been doing since you guys were coming up? Because for me, it, it, um, it's very painful, Uguti. We've been, we've been rallying against saying we need to own these means of production. And then when we do come work under the older generation who do own these production companies, they still persist the same exploitative practices of the system at large, which continues the migrant labor efforts politically, but continues just sustainability, like we can't sustain ourselves. Creativity aside, just bread and butter issues. But even when we come to creativity, to, to nurture the creative aspect, you know what I mean by that is, if we have a bandu abapete in these positions who do come from here, the ground, then there's a lot more empathy, a lot more sympathy for scheduling, for aiding, for resources, making up, wardrobe, you know, where to get this. There's a lot of cutting of corners because we're all trying to make a buck. So I'm just trying to understand from your generation to now, because you're still active, what have been some of the challenges? And, you know, I saw there on the flyer that you say you're a business, you're a business person. How, how do we mitigate some of these issues, you know, because isn't though that really are really really I feel for myself are holding us back even as we do have access to these structures um, that are present in the KZM Film Commission and, 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 and Durban uh, um, Film Office and others counting all over the country. It's just how, how do we get to a space where the production companies really really stop exploiting the people who are really trying to prop them up and, 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 and in, in, in that same space, uh, put in work in their craft because we're also passionate about putting work in their craft. Yeah, sorry for pontificating. Well, uh, but, um, well, as long as there is capitalist amongst us, there will always be exploitation. Whether black, whatever color you call it, white, black, whatever, you will always find it there. So, a capitalist is there to make money. By all means they can make money, they will try to make money. So, depending on where you come from, uh, it, 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 you, you have to take, I, I don't want to sound very political, I want to sound artistic. Where you come from, uh, 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 it has, to, it has to, to take a certain character of you understanding and seeing the devil for what the devil is. Um, I took a stand since I was a young boy, you know, um, when we fought, when I fought against the contract of Mnet, people thought that I was crazy. But today, the very same thing that I fought for like five, seven years ago, they're sitting in parliament discussing it, trying to alter that and using my experience as an example of what happened. So you have to get to a point where you stand for what you believe in. If you don't want to be part of that system of those people, of those capitalists, then start your own, create your own, make the space that is conducive for like-minded people who can come in and be part of that. I mean, I just mentioned the issue of the digital space that now is being exploited. There's um, an institution called the C CSRI under the Department of Communication that gives out those kind of spaces and, you know, with quite high speed that you can put your stuff on there and people don't get bored when they get whatever. You know that buffing thing? They have technical word for it, I don't understand it. 
I know it, but I don't understand how it gets into that whole thing. So, so what I'm trying to say to you is, maybe change the think, change the thinking. There's a, there's something that I've learned called the shared value system. It's a shared value concept, where you give something, I give something, we solve the problem, and we are all responsible for the problem that's there. So if we can create that kind of mentality within the film sector, and I think we can solve a lot of problems within the film sector, and exploitation will never be part of that, because you feel responsible for the problem that is there, and you have to put, provide solution. And the, whoever the other guy who's on the other side must also do the same. Maybe it's this thinking thing. I don't have quite answers, but I'm just thinking. Thanks a lot, Jaman. Thanks a lot. Another round of applause for Tony. Yeah. Nice. That was very nice. Yeah. Now, guess who's next? Erino. <laughs> How's it, everyone? Um, Lazuko kind of bumped into me and, he's, and he said, do you mind having a chat about the creative side of the film industry? And I'm like, yeah, well, that, that's kind of... Oh, I need to do this. I can rap. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so Lezuko um, kind of bumped into me and he said, Hi Narina, can you chat about the creative um, experience you've had um, in the industry? I'm like, yeah, well, of course. I can talk about um, the small budgets, I can talk about um, the deadlines, I can talk about um, a lot of things. And he said, no, no, um, I want you to talk about the color palette. I'm like, okay, the color palette. Now, as a creative, um, the first thing you uh, kind of look at is the color palette, like what your movie or your story, what is the color palette? So I want to tell you a little story. So if we take, so I went back and I said, listen, let me think about it. Let me think about the color palette. Uh, we need to, to close the, to the mic. Let me think about this color palette. So I really reflected over the years. I started in the industry in 2002. And I started it at backstage. I don't know if you guys were born. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Now, to be quite honest, I've only worked on black productions. So what Lizuka asked me is to talk about the color palette. <laughs> so let me kind of share a little insight. Um, everyone knows the color wheel. Yeah. You know the color wheel? Yes. Yeah? So imagine if you take the color wheel and you spin it. You spin the color wheel. What color do you get? What color do you get if you spin the color wheel? White. Yeah. And if you take all those colors and you mix them Individually, am I right now? My position was wrong. So must I repeat myself? So, so if you take the color wheel and you take each individual color and you mix it physically, what color do you get? Black. So in my life, Race doesn't mean anything. And, and I'm standing here because I, I'm, I love Durban. I'm, you know, I've been in Joburg all my life. Um, I think Durban's got such a, a new breed. And what I'm saying is we should tell our story. 
However, Luzuka asked me, are we going to close the gap between the white and the black? Luzuko, there is no, there is no gap. There is no gap for me. There is no gap. It's, it's. We need to kind of just own it, and we need to trust ourselves. I believe in Durban. We've got so much talent. We've got too much talent. And one of the things is, I've been really thinking about this. It's like. The content and the stories, it, we, we've got so, the story shouldn't be about the past. We need heroes. We need to start writing about heroes. We need to start making movies and TV series about heroes. Because we need a hero in society. And, and that's the gap, and that's how we're going to close the gap. We need a hero. We need the, we need the, I don't know, the Superman. We need to create that person or that, that genre or that, that kind of thing. And that's the only way we're going to close the gap. We cannot keep on telling stories about the strug our struggle or. I, I can't tell you, oh my God, I've been raped, or whatever, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know what white stories are, I'm kind of out of the loop, sorry. <laughs> um, shit. Um, the Skoa course cut or something, that's the only Afrikaans thing I worked on. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad I'm funny. Um, I really, I, I actually want you all to think about it. Let's create a hero for society. It's yeah, and yeah, that's that's the only way I see that we can close the gap. There's there's no other gap. It's like if I okay, let me let me take you through a day. Like I've you know I'm in the production. I I work with people and I love training people. However. You do as much as you want to do, as much as you want to learn, blah, blah, blah. I just want us, I'm, I'm actually standing here, and I want us to write a story about a hero. And it must be a woman. And she must be kick-ass sexy. Well, it could be anything. So, any questions? Who's got a hero story here? I'll read it now. Anyone? Anyone got an idea of a hero story? You got it? Okay. I'll come talk to you now. I need to win some awards. Come on. Nice one, nice one, nice one, nice one. Uh, actually, a close friend of mine once said, yeah, women are heroes. A close friend of mine once said, um, a woman is eternity because she gave birth to eternal life. So in order for a man to expand, they need a woman. So men cannot expand alone. So give props to women, man. Some of the strongest people in my life have been women. So now, give props to them as well. Guess who's next? Tunzi! Yes, I'm born at 14. Hello! Oh, is this thing, guys? Clock? Is this thing? Okay. Tunzi, I'm going to go to Yeah. That's the one. Cash your bags. Yeah, I choose the microphone. Uh, so I know it, it's this thing, guys. You know when you're emotional. You know when you're emotional. English just runs away. You just want to speak in your own language. You know when you're angry. You know I don't. But I will try. Let me try. And the reason for that, that George is running away. It's because of what this space represents for me. 
and what all these faces and all these people in this room represent. Uh, so, for those who are right late, my name is Mutu Dwarak uh, So, in the, in the agenda, but here I must speak about my journey when I was conceptualizing a hostel, which is currently playing on yesterday. Uh, Mosa, Film Office, Luzugo, Film Commission, Masiko, and uh, Isolez were all protocol observed. Uh, Imbeu, yeah. Uzalo, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and many others that are in the room. The reason why I'm emotional with people is because of the topic, number one. Number two, what amplified the emotion when I walked into the space. I saw a lot of faces that represent different places in my journey to getting to where I'm trying to go. By the way, I haven't arrived. There is Morgan. When I see Morgan, I think 2008. <laughs> 2008, my first job ever in the industry, sitting at the back of the clan, on the end two, going to Tunzini, a track that is full of old tired, you know, what you feel it was like, yes, I'm a saying, end two, from here to Tunzini, back of the clan, because I was chasing a dream. I see Menga. No, I, I, I know him from other places doing other things. I see you gift. And my mind just races back. I remember, I remember some of PA now. He said PA me now. Yeah, a, 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 office PA. When I got to set, the first thing when they introduced me to the first AD, he just said, oh God. <laughs> because he didn't believe me. Yeah. But anyway, what I'm trying to get at is that within this space, there is the monk and the manga, the gift, the mtunzi, who represent a voice of creatives that do what we were, we were told you were speaking about or stumble across. So it is around there. They stumble across a space in their lives where they have now to not compromise but have to take a detour in order to get to where they want to go. Yeah. Um, Umenga, before he directed, I knew him doing other things before he directed. Umenga knew me as a art standby before I was the first AD. Gift knew me as a set PA. There are, couple, there are a couple of people in this room who are actors. Some of them, we knew them as extras. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. What it means for creatives, you know, actors across all boards, actors, crew, uh, producers, whatever. What it means is that Itehu or, I should, or should I say the climate the climate the, the climate Itehuini is slowly changing. It's changing and it's, it's now opening up and allowing or giving a room for people that have been, what you say, hustling and trying to get to a certain, a certain place in their lives. Now, what my mom always says to me, she just quotes the Bible. She says, Denham. I'll say it in English. I, God help me, I, I hope I remember. It's in Proverbs. Actually, a person's gift will make room for him. 
and it goes on to say, it will put you before great men. The reason for that is not giving up. She also says, there's another verse, Mtanam, I even named my company according to that verse. It says, do not give up in doing what is good, for you will reap a good reward if you do not give up. Yeah. I think I misquoted it. It says, for at the proper time, you will reap a good reward if you do not give up. The reason I'm able now, there's nothing that set, that basically what I'm saying, there's nothing that sets me apart from a person who has not created their own, their own show, from a person who has not reached where they want to go, from a person whose name has not been on TV. There's nothing that sets me apart. The only thing that can maybe set me apart from you or from Umenga or from Ugift or from Tony Horoch and Nerina is giving up. Is missing the mark. Is to stop trying. There's a man, he usually comes to him, Yeah, Ukesh I mean, um, he's known as Black Fox. Uh, lately, he really inspired me. I went to see him at his workplace. I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit down now. I went to see him at his workplace. I'm only going to say one thing. Uh, don't, just don't give up on your dream. When I went to see him at his workplace, I found two stones on the table. The other one was arched and the other one was flat. And I'm like, okay, so here's a, here's a nice space. Uh, these things are out of place. What are they doing here? It's like, I use them to train every day. So what I do on the arched rock is that I use my, the palm of my hand and I hit the thing for 30 minutes every day without fail. And then I go to the other one and I hit it again with the palm of my hand. I'm conditioning myself for a dream that I've dreamt since 1984. So that when that opportunity arrives, it finds me ready. There's nothing as sad as somebody who says, oh, I want to act, but they are not researching yes. about acting. When the opportunity comes, okay, yeah, daddy, let's do it. They are not ready. They can't do it. I want to I wanna direct, I want to do this and this. They are not researching. They've got smartphones. They've got data. Hello? Data, data, whatever you call it. They spend sleepless nights chatting, chatting away. They don't research. When I try to engage them, they can't engage me at a level where I can see that this person is pursuing this dream. So, Luzu, because I'm just, just to honor you, I'm done, I would sit down. <laughs> just to honor the, the agenda and whatnot. When I was growing up, when I was in primary school, my grandfather used to play my bicycle, you know my bicycle? That white sheet, cover the windows with black plastic, and then have that projector, and then it's my film. When I was in the lower, lower primary school, hey, I looked at this thing, I loved it. I loved it to bit. I used to, when it's the weekends, I used to follow him to the halls and everywhere. He did it all over the country. And then, when I was in, when I was in grade six, my mom bought me a camera, a stills camera. I'm, I'm, try, I'm just trying to get at the journey of me conceptualizing a hostel. And then I'm gonna sit down. My mom got me a steel camera as a birthday present. And then I loved telling stories. When I was in grade eight, I wrote, I entered a school's competition. It was called Dancing Pencils. I beat everyone at my school. White, Indian, colored, every, everyone, I beat them. Because storytelling doesn't have a color, as Nerina said. Doesn't have a color. Beat all of them. The following, the following, the following week, they told me, hey, you beat everyone. Now you must go beat everyone in the region. I'm like, I'm ready to bring them. I beat them again. They told me again, you must beat everyone in the province and beat them again. And my book got published. I was in grade eight. 
the following year, my, my teacher's like, my boy, you show them last year, now you must show them again. <laughs> I'm like, bring them. And I continued again, I beat them to prove. To prove what? You, you know how, it's, it's this thing I'm talking about, you say you are chasing something, but you are not doing anything to nurture it. Yeah. When I watch adverts, I would repeat uh, whatever they were saying because I was going to a, a, a multiracial school just to improve my English, ne? <laughs> uh, to, to be able to put down on that pencil and paper words that are in English and be able to compete with my peers. Following him, my teacher's like, do it again, my boy. I'm like, I'm gonna prove to them I wasn't just playing. I wasn't chanting them. I beat everyone in school. I beat everyone in the region. I beat everyone provincially. I got published again. <laughs> the following year. And then I was like, yo, I really beat everyone. I got published. Wow. You can check my name on it's there on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. The first one is called Tunzi and the Strangers, the other Google one... Google now, please! Yeah, Google. The other one is called Tunzi and the Strangers. Not that one. And then I continued, I saw, hold on Tunzi, there's something there. And then I started to nurture my, my gift. I nurtured it, and then I started conceptualizing stories. I got an opportunity to work for a certain production company, which I'm not going to mention. It's, it's, non, it's not important in this space. What's important? It's not relevant here. I got to pitch. They gave me an opportunity to pitch my story when I was... By the way, hey, hey, Romenga. Yeah. I got, they gave me an opportunity or a platform to pitch through a mutual friend. Because when you are sitting in corridors, we are busy talking about things that are not, that are not building you. Yeah. Because I was speaking to a friend about, it's what Tony was saying, how you got to enter Black Diamond. A friend of mine who was directing at that time, when I was still chasing the dream of directing, going to dish up catering, I'm here behind him. I wanna know, I wanna enter as well, I wanna be a director. He's going to sit down at the table, I'm there, I'm listening. I'm asking him questions, I'm engaging him. Yeah. And then I'm telling him, no, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm thinking. He was blown away, he went to tell the producers. I didn't have the, plat I didn't have the platform to tell producers. They were like, really? Bring it. I bring it, they take it, they're like, wow, we love it. Uh, it was a, a, a bumpy process, eh? Well, how do you say it? It was, two it was 2016 when I gave them the synopsis of the hostel. Uh, I left the company, uh, went to work for another uh, company. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that thing followed me, eh? because telling stories is my thing. Followed me, no, come back, we want you to produce the story with us, we want you in and in. I'm like, okay, but stop, what's the way to use my brother? That's weird. I didn't say it. That one day, what's the word? That's weird. I was like, don't do that thing. The one they're saying. I'm not gonna come back if you do that thing. Basically, you must fight. You must not give up. It's what I quoted earlier. My mom always gives me that verse. Do not give in, do not give up in doing what is good. For at the proper time you will reap a good reward if you do not give up. Until today. When the opportunity came, they said to be doing it now. I'm like, I'm ready, bring it. They like direct it. I'm like, I'm ready. I did it. I'll give you a scoop. Um from the episodes that you've seen on TV. I'm sure your favorite one was the one I directed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why? Because chasing the dream. Whether you are here, you are an extra. Whether you are here, maybe you are just a production assistant. Maybe you are here, you are not even in the industry. You don't know which door to knock at. We are asking for doors. How do we open those platforms? Whether you are blank, but you have a dream. Chase your dream. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Believe in your dream. 
take a matches, ignite your dream until it's fire. Yes. I grew up in the in the how do you call it homesteads in the farms. What we would do when we cook, when the fire is dying down, you, you kneel down and you blow. Make sure the flame comes up so that it can cook the food until it's ready. So what you must do, get on your knees, work hard, blow, 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 blow until there's a flame. When people come and they say, can we taste in this pot, they find the food ready. Yeah. That's what I can say to you. Right. You know, that's my journey. Get on your knees and blow. Banger. Banger. Putting words in my mouth. Don't put the thing in the in the film, man. Eh? Banger. Bastard. Otherwise, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Get on your knees and blow. Nice one, nice one. So Zay, get on your knees and blow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't ask questions. Get on your knees. <laughs> okay, no, that's cool. That's an inspiring story, right? Give him a round of applause. That's inspiring. That's very, very inspiring. But I've got a question for you, my brother, because we all know the journey from concept to screen is not paved with roses, right? There's a lot of young kids out here that have so many concepts, they sent to all these companies, next thing their concepts are stolen, you know, they lose their intellectual property. So for you to get from that concept, you give it to a company, they wanna work with you as the producer, obviously they wanna split the profits, but they wanna give you maybe the lesser of the profits, even though it's your concept. So I wanna know, what, what were the challenges you faced from concept to screen? Yes. It's taking me back to the thing I didn't want to get at, that emotional thing. I said English runs away when I have to talk about those things. Because it's very emotional. Um, fortunately, I've got brothers here um, whom I've mentioned and who can attest to my journey. Um, the challenge is that a producer or any businessman the business model is that if I want to sell this hat I want to make a profit yeah. that's their mandate the problem is that their mandate as producers is profit they are bulldozers what they don't care who they bulldoze in the process as long as they get a profit that's my take uh, so what I would advise my fellow, my fellow creatives in the room to do is that you need to be informed. There's nothing, there's nothing that will bite you in the ass or catch you with your pants down as not having information about your respective topic. That's what I was saying earlier. So what, what you need when you, when you believe in yourself and you've got something and you say, okay, I've got this thing. So what I did, even though I did it later, maybe you can do it better, was that, like Tony said, um, we, there are no systems in place to guide or to help. So each situation ends up being unique. But in my situation or in, 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 in my experience, after I had, and they were like, no, you want to make the profit, so you can <laughs> What I did, I was just stubborn. I was stubborn, I was like, you must understand that the power or the, the ball is always in your court if it's your thing. Number one, if you don't know how to copyright or do any of those things, make sure, email it to them or email it to someone so that there's a date you can there's always paper trade. You can always go back and say no. But on such and such a date, I had such and such a thing. Yeah. Ne? Paper trade. If you get into a room and start talking about your thing, email that person. Email them as we spoke about such and such a thing. So that any day or any, any time they start, they start doing something that resembles or is now like your own. 
you'll be like, no, but hold on, comrade. We spoke about this on such and such a date. Say, just always make sure there's paper tray, basically. So, for in, in my experience, that that's what helped me, paper tray. Otherwise, otherwise. No, while while you're still there, um, I I have a a different question, but closer to to what he's talking about. Here you are. You came up with an idea, it's your script, it's your intellectual property. Mm. I want to understand what made you to go into another production company and allow them to partly own your intellectual property. Mm. If not 50%, maybe 60% or 70%. Mm. I, can, I can act it out with you and I know who was negotiating with you. But I want you to... <laughs> no, I know what they said to you. <laughs> but I'm saying... Um, and I'm asking this because... Just to give a little bit of a background. This man, I met him last year, right? Yes. I met him last year on set. And he has done so many things. He's been a PA in production. He has done assistant directing. So there's no way that he does not understand the nuances of production. And he, again, he's a storyteller, like he said. He's got two books that are published. More than anything else, he can direct. So what, what is it that made you to think that you can't do this thing by yourself, you need someone else? And if you were doing it by yourself, do you think you could have done a much better, much more business, made sense making type of decision than the situation that you're in right now. It's another one that I want to ask, but I will... I will. <laughs> uh, were it not... Were it not for... For incidences like my own, or for struggles that each and every one of you are going through in the industry, this kind of platform would not existed. So it's what I spoke about earlier. It's the climate in the industry, like it's a win, which is just so stagnant. It does not allow people to move forward. So sometimes a push comes to a shove and you say, you know what? So for me, for me, even though some things would not make business sense and some things you'd see, oh shit, man, they are screwing me over. You say it's fine, so that I can just enter. I just wanna enter. That's all I wanna do. I wanna have one leg in. When the one leg is in, the losers will invite me, and the other producers will see me, and they will say, "Boy, boy, we like the thing. Eh? Come up with another one." So that was the that was the thinking behind for me when because. It, so when I, when I say 2016 was the pitch, you can imagine, you can imagine the struggle 2017, 2018, until now, uh, it's 2019, it's on air now. But these years, it, hey, oh, it wasn't easy, eh? It wasn't easy. <laughs> but it was worth it. So, yes, it didn't make sense. Um, and what Tony is speaking about in terms of your intellectual property. Because producers will come to you, they are thinking about money, they are thinking about tomorrow, or production companies. Ne? So number one, just, number one, my first point is that the reason for me was to get a platform for me to tell my story. That's the one thing that made me to go to another production company. And because of the space that I'm in, the climate in Durban, it's not raining, folks. Eh? It's not raining in Durban. So, yeah, you are forced to go to those ones. Who, yeah, yeah, it's not raining. It's not raining yet. It was very dry. Number two, intellectual property. That's the other question you asked. They will fight you for the thing. What they are thinking about is the future. When I say future, maybe the, the language you understand is seasons. They are thinking about next year. All right, money in the pocket. Season three, money in the pocket. So 
by all means. Because they don't want you to now do this thing with them one season and then run away to go to other people. They will say, no, we want a percentage of that IP. So, because I wanted to get in. Yeah, how about 20 centuries? <laughs> Tony's getting too fast now. <laughs> Questions from Tunzi? One more? Oh, yes, yes. Da, Oza. Come closer. And you put us in. Round of applause. Yay. Okay, guys. I'm going to. Johnny. Um, yes, how are you? Oh, by the way, I'm from this cool tunes. So, yeah. Um, Mina Elfunu Buza went up to the Uguti, having gone through the experience that you had, um, what will you advise me as an upcoming um, filmmaker? Um, would you advise me to go through the same process that you did, or me to just go straight to the broadcaster? So, um, looking at your experience, what would you say? Uh, a multi choice, nothing Gena always start to go on Gena and have a production company, living number nine. Their answer was, Oh, we love it, but just get so and so to mentor you. Get so and just do it with so and so. So, either way, because of the way it is in our country, you'll always hit a brick wall. They'll say, No, but you're inexperienced. No, we don't trust you with so much money. No, we don't think you'll be able to execute it. No, it's brilliant, but just so to answer you, uh, since they are now, angas nam nama anga ya film commission na isas kaya dema wenze jan ko tu put masaweng mas. Since we are in KZN, the film commission is there, the film office is there, friendliest people you'll ever know. Put masaweng mas inside student fia ye nang zotoli permit with respect, with the utmost humbleness. He's student, thank us. Now man, he's still the same smile, still approachable till today. So what I would advise, go to the film office, go to the film commission. I, I think there's even a call out. They are closing Saga 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, PET short films. Right, Bala. It's what I was saying earlier. Um, just be prepared so that when the opportunity presents itself, you are ready, comrade. You are ready, you are just, you know? So since there's a call out, and I think they open this week, for next week, obviously they are, they are looking for people who are ready with something, not people who say, oh shit, and then they're gonna go back and start conceptualizing. They want people who are ready, who have been ready waiting for an opportunity. You know like those guys who, who wait by the, by the robots with that board and say, uh, Jobless, uh, blah blah blah. I'm a plumber. I'm a what what with this toolbox here yeah, already. So that you know you've got a plumbing problem. You see a plumber by the robot. You say, oh, let's go. Already his toolbox is there. You know, be prepared so that when the opportunity arises, you just jump in. Yeah, man. Nice one, bro. Nice one. Uh, for now, I'd like to call upon the system. There's another hand. There's another question. Oh, jeez. Guys, I didn't ask for questions. So. What's going on? Okay, there we go. I just wanted to ask if no one, if, I just wanted to ask if no one, no one's giving you the opportunity. I wanted to ask how would you go about um, creating the, uh, the opportunity for yourself and working independently without asking for help and things like that. Independence, chief. Independence. <laughs> <laughs> English is running now, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, if the opportunity if the opportunity is not being afforded to you and you know that I am capable, I can do this thing, 
uh, and you want to be independent and take that approach of doing it on your own. The best way to go about it is to find mentors. Find a person to mentor you. They mentor you so that when you get into that whatever field, maybe it's acting or maybe it's producing, maybe it's directing or writing, so that once you get the opportunity to get into that field, already you've got somebody who's got experience, you've got somebody that can give you backing. Somebody you can say, Ish comrade, I don't know, now they're saying, I must now write a synopsis, what's that? Ish, they're saying I must write a tagline, what? you know? Find somebody who will mentor you. Uh, I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Find, just find a mentor, somebody to look up to. If not, if a mentor, maybe Mtunzi, I'm Kulumisa, he's not interested, Mtunzi, he's too busy for you, he's there now. Then it's fine. Let's exploit, let's exploit ILO, internet, 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 Google, ask, find out. There are so many, there are so many books out there. Go to the library. Information is out there. It's just that as young people, we are lazy. We just like, ah, oh, they're not giving me the opportunity, but we're not doing anything to get the information. So if a mentor is not there to help you to be independent, guide you, no, do this, do that, do this, do that. Then go, go, go the other route. Research, internet, research, go to libraries. You'll come right. Okay, before we have our last speaker, I'd like to call up uh, someone from the Devon Film Office, Mr. Fezil. Well, just to say a word or two. Guys, this is the system. Please, round of applause. Ow. This is where we need money from. Salmonani. I intend to call this Ogoti or Rafael Umanawang Bizanje. So I hope you will all uh, understand me because this is an impromptu speech. Um, I'm from the Devon Film Office. Some of you, I think they know me uh, because I have given some money to them and they just decided to chow it all. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> and, and that happened, you know, when we started with, the, with our programs the development programs, uh, we experienced such. But anyway, we still gonna continue. Um, I'm not gonna be long, because this is not about me and the Devon Film Office, but it's about the filmmakers, but I am just share uh, a thing or two with you. As you can see, I'm shaking. I think uh, Olusu will promise me to get something to drink before I come here, but still now I haven't got anything. But anyway, you know, it's okay. Um, yeah, the Devon Film Office, basically, um, it's a department of a Tegu municipality. Uh, we are under economic development. What we do, we promote a Tewini or the city of Deben as a film-friendly city. Uh, that's one thing. And then um, the other thing that we do um, in supporting the development of the film and television, television industry sorry, is to make sure that our filmmakers, especially local filmmakers uh, that are here and those that are not here uh, do receive some kind of support from the office. So we do that in few ways, one or two. Um, that I think will be relevant to mention at the moment. Uh, one, we have a micro-budget film program. That's where we give out a funding of 150,000 per year for five projects. Uh, so what we target there is uh, the filmmakers that are emerging, people that haven't produced anything in their lives, but are willing to be out there and say, I have something uh, that I can go and knock on. Um, so many doors and something like that. So that is also accompanied by um, a, a training program where we also invite separately um, people that are expertise in different fields of filmmaking in the industry. So we, we also gonna be sending out a, a, a call out 
to us for people with experience who can support us in mentoring those filmmakers in making sure that they don't charge our money. Instead, they use it for what they have asked for it. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, the micro budget, we, as I said, we we only find five projects per year, per our financial year. So our financial year starts. Um, at the 1st of July and ends on the 31st, no, 31st, 30, 31st, you know what I mean, but it's June to July, you know. Um, and then we also have a, a development fund program, that's where we target um, intermediate to experienced filmmakers, those who have made movies before, um, at least at a value of 2.5 million, but we do negotiate with that because it's only for two projects that we find. Uh, I heard uh, Utoni speaking earlier on and, 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 and some of the guys about the systems and all that. Yeah, I mean, that is very true. We, we, I, I wouldn't say we are new in the film industry uh, uh, um, sort of uh, space. But we are trying by all means to engage with filmmakers to make sure that what we are trying to achieve, at least it's something that they also agree with and it's something that they need. But with, 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 with uh, being in the, in the government uh, for, I think it's been six years now, and, and as I was saying earlier on that some of these programs are, are pretty new. But I'm glad to, to announce uh, through you, Chair, that uh, on the 20th, oh, in fact, I have Musa. I think some of you know Musa is our permit officer. Can you, can you please just stand up? That's Musa. So on the 20th of March, at ICC we will be um, not announcing, but workshopping our five-year strategy. That is, since the Devon Film Office was formed or established uh, 15 years back, so now we'll be celebrating that. And as part of celebrating that, we'll also be introducing um, our five-year channel strategy so that we know where we're going. And as, as a result of that, we will allow you guys who are interested in being part of that to please come and join us at ICC. But that will, um, maybe I'll, I'll speak to Luzugo after this so he can share and, and, and uh, invite you all. I guess for now that would be from me. Thank you. Nice one, nice one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our last speaker for this evening is the very, very beautiful, the gorgeous, angelic one, Chanel. <laughs> Hi guys, um, so yeah, um, I'm a writer with ADD so I've been sitting here for the last however long listening to everyone talk and all the things I sort of plan to talk about are gone because my brain is swimming with so much stuff right now. Um, so I'm just going to tell you my story basically and uh, Dave in the Stripes, I hope this helps you um, with your question. Um, so I um, I went to Reservoir Hill Secondary um, Public School, not very big art art uh, program, um, and I couldn't draw like my brother, and I I couldn't like like I didn't have a tangible sort of uh, outlet for this fire that was building up inside me. But I had like I knew that I, I wanted to tell stories. I wanted to release this energy that I had in me, but I wasn't really sure what that meant. Um, when it came to the whole, you've got to apply for university and decide what you want to do with your life, um, I didn't really know what my options were. Um, I wanted to be, at some point, like, I mean, in my life, I wanted to be a paleontologist, I wanted to be a vet, I wanted to be something, but I didn't really have any point of reference for creative work because um, I'm sure a lot of you guys know you like you're, you tell your parents you want to be an artist and they're like what is that? How is that going to pay the bills? You get a real job and then after that you can do what you want to do on the side. Um, so I ended up studying journalism for, for about a year and a bit. 
Um, when I got into my second year, I realized that um, I was lucky enough that the film school was next to the journalism school. Um, and I made friends with those guys, helped them out on their projects, and I was like, wait, hold on, I'm doing the wrong thing completely. Um, and it was my first sort of like understanding of what, what, what it even meant to tell stories in this, in this way. Um, but even then, when I started studying film, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew that I had creative energy, um, but it's kind of like, I mean, if you go to a school where you have an art program, you have art, like an actual art teacher who's going to nurture your artistic creative talents and um, push your uh, critical thinking and that kind of thing, um, I think that like it sets you up to be able to sort of find your niche and what you want to do. I didn't have any of that. So for me, I just there was this wild energy going around that I had no idea what to do with. Um, so I mean, it took me a good couple of years while studying. Um, but I was very lucky that I went to the Durban International Film Festival. Um, they have a lot of programs and workshops and uh, panels and things like that that you can go to. And I met up with uh, people who worked in the industry. Um, it allowed me an opportunity to actually see how people sort of engage with their own creativity. Um, and I entered short film competitions. Um, and this, I think, is something that's really, um, uh, it's a really cool way to get yourself into, uh, one, making your own, or your own films, um, pushing yourself to kind of get out there um, without too much pressure, you know. Um, and I did the short film competition uh, that was run by the Devon International Film Festival for a couple of years. Um, and I won uh, on my third try. Yeah. Um, and what that did for me was that it, it allowed me to sort of put my work out there, but because it's a competition, it's kind of like, you know, I've got a time limit, I'm gonna try this out. If it doesn't work out, hey, I had a time limit, it's not perfect. Um, but it also kind of gave me this uh, push to, like, I kind of, what happened was I committed to doing it. My friends were like, uh, who, who were sort of working with the festival said, you should try this out, and I said, okay, I will. And the day that the competition launched, they were like, so you're doing it? And I was like, oh wait, hold on, I didn't really think about this. And they're like, but you said you would, and that pressure kind of forced me to, I don't know, I just felt the pressure of it, and I did it, and I ended up winning. Um, sorry, I'm rambling a little bit here. Um, so for me, it, it's like, my journey has been very tricky, like in terms of, trying to find your creative niche and trying to, trying to sort of uh, find a space in the industry. Um, one of the biggest problems I think that we have in Durban, um, outside of all the uh, bureaucratic stuff and, and all the systems that are in place, is that um, when I've been to Joburg and Cape Town, um, I was lucky enough to, I entered the 48 hour film project, I'll tell you guys about that now, um, and uh, we, my team won the 48 hour film project for Durban in 2016 um, and I was lucky enough to be able to go to Seattle for the Palooza, which is a 48 hour film project festival um, and when I was there um, I, I had a realization um, in terms of like what is wrong with Durban what is wrong with creative industries in Durban and it was that outside of all the all, outside of funding outside of resources outside of uh, money and access and all of those things, which are very important, but my colleagues in the panel also touched on that, um, is that I feel like we're lacking a certain sense of creative energy in Durban. Um, when you go to certain spaces, there's something happening every day. Like you can go to an art gallery, you can go to uh, like an exhibition, you can go to a music, music like a gig, you can go to a theatre production. Um, every day there's something creative that's happening and um, and creatives find themselves in these spaces where they're surrounded by this energy and it's freaking electrifying, it's amazing. Like when you're in this space, um, your own energy and your own drive to want to create and to want to do stuff just builds up and like I found myself so electrified in these spaces. You go to the film festival um, and you go to all these things and I feel like um, my ideas, are, new ideas are sparked, and I'm, I'm excited to go forth and do things, and I'm excited to pick up projects that I forgot about. 
And I realize that that's a problem we have here, is that a lot of the times, um, as creatives, we find ourselves in isolation. Um, we're kind of sitting, sitting on our own going, I have a dream, I have this thing I really want to do, I don't know how. Uh, and maybe you may speak to your friends about it, but like to actually find yourself in that space where you're surrounded by like-minded people who are pushing you to move forward, um, it's a really special thing. And so um, it's why I appreciate uh, events like this, because I think that um, all of us getting together and speaking about like our passions, our problems, our ideas, um, can really help sort of drive us forward. Um, and I, 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 really, I really would like to see that more of this go on. If I can say anything, um, is that I think that for me, one of the things that I did was, so with a 48 hour full project, um, in 2016, um, there were posts on Facebook, the 48 hour full project happened. Um, I'd done a short, film a short film competition before and won. And I was like, you know, I really see the value in that as a tool to kind of push you to do stuff. Um, and so I wanted to apply and I completely forgot about it. It had been going for months that I'd been seeing these posts. And I think it was like a week before the, co the registration was over, a week before the competition was meant to actually begin. Um, I saw the post saying there are two, two spots left or something for teams to, to, to enter the 48 Hour Full Project. And I basically just called up a bunch of friends. Like I called everyone that I knew that worked in the, in the industry that I thought would actually say yes to me. And I said, hey, do you want to make a film with me? It's next weekend. Um, and I was really lucky that I had a couple of friends who actually canceled their plans for the weekend and came in with me. Um, and so what the 48 Hour Full Project is, is that they, um, it's, you basically make a short film, four to seven minutes in 48 hours. So you get to a launch event on the Friday evening at like 6.30. They give, you pick a genre out of a hat. Each team gets their own genre. You're given a line of dialogue, a prop, and a character that has got to be in the film. And from that moment on Friday evening till Sunday evening the same time, you've got to come up with a concept, write the script, shoot, edit, and hand in your finished film after 48 hours. Um, so we did that. In 2016, um, it was insane. We slept maybe a total of like five hours over the whole weekend, if that. Um, we worked really hard, we pushed really hard. There were a lot of tense moments, a lot of fighting that went down between people, you know, when you're like not sleeping and everyone's trying to get this thing done. Um, but we made the film, we handed it in, and we ended up winning that year. Uh, we won the best film, we won... Um, I think it was best writing, best directing, best editing, best cinematography, and best actress. Yeah. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, and and it was it was just really cool because it was also just like um, I put myself out there. Like I was kind of terrified, like as a director. Um, also with like lack of resources, I was producing, writing, directing, and kind of keeping this team together. I also had a feeling of like responsibility and guilt because I would asked them to come in last minute and they'd canceled plans so I was kind of like shouldering a lot of responsibility to do this thing um, but but at the end of the day I was able to have like these people that I realized like oh my god like these guys are amazing because they actually sacrifice so much they we all went in as a team and worked really hard and tirelessly and Everyone tried to be as nice to each other as possible. Not always easy, but even with the fights we managed to get through, and then we won. And I think for me the lesson in, in that is that um, you've got to sort of find your tribe, you've got to find your people, um, you've got to go to things like this and, and speak to people. And, and, and you know, the, the whole thing about like, how do, I, how do I get out there and actually make films? How do I get out there and find a space in the industry? Um, there's no easy answer. Um, and I think that for me, what I realized is that as unfair as a lot of the systems are, as sort of um, like a lot of things don't work and a lot of things don't work well. A lot of people who are supposed to be working for you and helping you don't do what they're supposed to do. Um, it's ruthless, it is difficult. Um, but like to me, it's like if you have that drive and the passion, um, you've just got to really push and be, uh, like strive to be as, as, as work as hard as you can, take every opportunity, and yeah, just go with it.
Another round of applause. Any questions? Any questions? You know the mandate. You have to come here. There we go. Let's give a round of applause, please. Yeah. Like that. So, what advice would you give to an aspiring actress? Thank you. I'm from Joburg, so you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm kidding. Would you like to answer that? Sorry. Yeah. Would you? Okay. Um, I think, in terms of acting, I. <laughs> I strongly believe that um, you don't have to go anywhere. And more especially when you are now in case of the next time, now that there's a conducive space for, for film and television, um, there are, we have theater houses around here, mostly in Durban, that acting does not only mean that you only have to go to screen, it also means that, you know, get into theatre productions. Want to. Get, yeah, get into theatre productions, community theatre, and all those type of things. Just to keep the fire burning, like Mtunzi was saying, you know. Um, I wouldn't say kneel down and, and do what he said you must do, but kneel down and keep the fire burning all the time. And that's the best way to keep your acting going. But in terms of going to Dober, Joburg is flooded. Um, stay here. Stay at home. Make sure that you make a mark here. So that by the time you go there, you don't go in there to beg. They are actually begging you to go there. To do something. Um, yeah, I just want to add to that. I think, and this is um, not just for acting. I think that it's um, anything in the sort of creative field. Yes, Durban can be very difficult because the industry is not that big. We don't have as many productions. Um, but the one thing that um, I guess has kept me here for a long time as well is that I could I could be that person that leaves Durban and goes to Joba, goes to Cape Town, goes to LA, goes to New York or whatever, and add myself to the hundreds of thousands of other people who are trying to do what I, I do and be a little tadpole like them in, in this big ocean. Um, or I could, like for me, it was like stay in Durban and really push the avenues that I have here. So doing all the short film competitions, getting involved with the film festival, getting involved with the KZN Film Commission, um, like, and, and, and really just putting myself out there and pushing myself to my limits in Durban. And you start becoming like from a tadpole to a slightly bigger sort of, well, tadpoles aren't fish, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, starting to become a slightly bigger fish than you were in a smaller pond. Um, and to me, um, kind of like recognition that, I mean, I, like I, I'm still working my way up there, but I've gotten some recognition from Joba, Cape Town. I've gotten recognition internationally, um, not on a major level, but I've gotten it. Um, and that was from sticking around here and pushing my avenues here and really fighting to make myself work here. So I do think that like, while some people do run up, go to Joba, go to Cape Town, go to wherever, and can get their lucky break and strive, uh, it's not the only option. Back to the same question I asked on Tunzi earlier on about independence. 
I wanted to ask you uh, more specifically uh, regarding having wanting to have something you want to show, uh, something you regarding something you you, you have, regarding having something you want to show, um, and something I don't like being idle in the meantime that I'm waiting for an opportunity. I get having a, a mentor and all of that, but what do I do in the meantime? I want to have something that I'm doing right now. I don't want to stay idle forever. Um, so, okay, so in terms of, uh, uh, so, so the question was that um, you don't want to stay idle. What do you do in the meantime while you're trying to come up, while you're trying to find your avenues? Um, for me, it was uh, basically putting putting myself out there and and, and um, finding access. Like I didn't have, um, I like I did, I didn't have ac I didn't don't have a camera. I didn't have an edit suite. I didn't have any of those things. But I found ways to utilize any connections I did have. So when we did the 48 hour film project, um, some of the guys we were working with actually had a, like relationships with the um, hiring company in Durban. So we leveraged that and we spoke to them and we said, listen, we'll push the stuff on social media. Um, like, please, can we get some stuff? We were expecting to get a couple of lights and things like that. And we ended up getting like, um, you know, the Ari Alexa and anything. They were just like, whatever you want, give us your list. And we gave them a list of equipment we wanted, thinking that they were gonna tell us to fuck off and, and, and <laughs> go get our equipment elsewhere. And they were like, yeah, sure, great. And so we ended up getting like really per like brilliant equipment to work with, um, just off asking. So I think it's also just putting yourself out there and uh, being vulnerable, I guess, as well. And having those conversations with, with people to, uh, try and make the things you want to make happen. Like if you want to make a film but you don't know anyone in a hiring company to get the equipment, you have a camera phone, uh, you can get editing software on your phone. Like it may not it may not turn out the way that like it would if you had all the prof professional equipment, but it's practice and it's work and it's doing something. Um, so I think, I think it's just on that level of, I mean I know it's easier said than done, but it's on that level of just really putting yourself out there to f find as much of the resources as you can, uh, use the people around you, make connections, put yourself out there, like go into the KZN Film Commission website, um, they do a lot of training programs. Um, and you can go, you can get involved in some of the training programs, that also puts you in a position to meet other people who are in the same position as you, and then through those things you have a crew. Um, and somebody in that crew may have a camera, and somebody in that crew may have an edit seat. And you kind of just, piece it together um, and so my thing is just um, going back to the short film competition thing is that when I when I entered the short film competition um, I asked myself like like when we were given themes and we had to decide like we had to make a film I didn't go what dream idea can I come up with I went what do I have what do I have at my disposal right now um, what equipment do I have what resources what actors do I have access to and then I was like, how do I take these things that I have and make a film of it? Um, and that's what ended up happening. So I think it's just like essentially my main thing is being resourceful. Um, as um, Tunzi was saying, um, you have smartphones, you have the internet, even if you don't find, like, find access to the information. Uh, KZN and Film Commission does workshops. Um, I think KCAP, yeah, KCAP does workshops. There are lots of things out there. Um, there are like groups on Facebook. Um, just be hungry. Be hungry for information. Like, it, you know, to me as well, it's like I could win five Oscars, and still every day I still want to learn. I still want to push myself. I still want to be better. So it's just a matter of like, like, what are the questions I need to be asking? Where do I want to be? And what do I need to get there with what I have, basically. You're a better person than me. Me, after five Oscars, I am done. I am there. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, one more question. Sure. Uh, good evening. Um, sure. It's not me a question as such. Uh, it's a concern, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Tony was the first speaker. And um, what he spoke about are challenges that us, 
we are facing as an industry. Now, uh, I'll put it to you, Chair, because perhaps somewhere around 10 years down the line, I'll be an old man. Perhaps I won't make it here, my son will come here. And they will still be talking about the same challenges. So I think to a, set, to a certain extent, um, this platform should live and say there's some level of commitment in terms of saying, how do we deal with these challenges? One of the challenges that were identified here is that us here, we work for production companies. What are we doing about it? Two, it's the resources that the production companies have that we don't have. What are we doing about it? These were fingers that we were pointing, but the other three are pointing back at us. How is our code? How serious are we taking this job in this industry? So these are the kind of things that we should be looking at so that 10 years down the line, we're not coming back and talking about the same challenges. So what are we going to do about them? Uh, I'll, by way of example, I think if you follow soccer, they had major challenges in the past years. Very low salaries that were being paid, the conditions that were leaving the players, but the situation have improved. Because what did they do? They got united, they had a white paper. So, Chair, we need a white paper. How is that going to form out? I put it to you, Chair, that we need a white paper so that we have a base to say this is what we're working on and this white paper should actually give us a vision in terms of KZN, what do we want to achieve, say, in the next five years. And we set the platform for the rest of the other provinces. Um, in parting shot is that in our vision, we're still looking at bold and the beautiful, days of our life. I was this young. This is the job of, this, of these young people that I see here, to make sure that they replace the soapies. We need to be seeing our own soapies. But, but, case at end, we need a vision. Chair, you need a white paper, so that we know where you are going. In closing, there's KwaZulu, what do you call it, KwaZulu Natal Film Commission. You have the Deben Film Office. From what I'm hearing, looks like the right hand and the left hand doesn't know what it's doing. Again, let's get the white paper. There was a young, young lady here. She was saying, I don't know what to do if I fail, and this, and this, and this. What are the structures in place? So that these people who have a passion in this industry, they don't, they don't despair and leave this industry with the expectation. I thank you. Thank you, thank you. Powerful words indeed. We do need a white paper. Oh, yeah, we do. We, we actually do. Uh, before you, let's just, ladies first. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hi. Oh, wow, what a resounding hi. <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. Um, so, I have a comment slash question. A, a question? Um, the, the, actually, the young lady that came before, yeah, that came before me, really just feel the deep because I've been thinking about it. and I'm sitting there. And I'm like, okay, how do I phrase this question, and how do I make this comment, right? So I'm a producer, right? And um, there's a huge frustration in Durban around what is that we do, and I like what you were saying just now about not being idle, you know? So I'm doing a talk show, right? It's online. It's on all the, um, social media platforms. The hundred percent. Please do check it out um, on all um, social media. It's called the hundred percent. It's the hundred percent. It's the first Durban info infotainment talk show. Wait. Okay. There we go. Right. So it's the first of its kind of talk show. Right now, the whole thing about what I'm making a comment about is that number one, it's tough, guys. It's such a huge struggle, and especially um, when it comes to a thing that is not filmed. That's what I found biggest, the biggest problem about Durban. Durban understands film. It, it, 
for me, this is my experience, right? Now, it, it seems like Durban doesn't understand anything outside of film. So then the funding opportunities become a little bit slim and the, the criteria becomes a little bit blurry, you know? It's like, what are you doing? What is it? How can I actually help? And the thing is, even if you articulate, it's like, nah, we actually find film, right? So that was the thing number one that I think we need to sort of think about, especially, I think I'm posing this question even to the stakeholders that are in the room, your German film office and your film commissions or whatever. I know maybe that word film just kind of narrows you know, everything down and it's just, it's, it's about film. So um, my story, just very, very briefly, I'll be very brief, is that also I wanted to do this thing and I had this drive and I'm like, how do I do it? And I went to all sorts of different channels that didn't happen. So I was like, I'm gonna find another way to do it. Saved up some money, got a camera, went to route by myself, <laughs> you know, trying to film this thing. And actually from that, as you were saying, opportunities have arisen, right? People are actually calling me now and they, they're calling me to come and cover the events because it's what I do, and then we broadcast on the show, and then it becomes a huge marketing tool, right? So the question I think that I have is, what is, because the lady was talking about, should you go to Joburg? And that was the thing that I've gotten, like a, um, a, a suggestion that I've gotten very many times. And I'm like, no, who's gonna build the thing in Durban? You know, who's gonna be here and then make the things to be done, you know, that makes the, yeah. Thank you guys, I'm glad that there's a consensus because there really is a frustration and as you were saying that so much creativity is in Durban, you know, we're so creative and we're so passionate, we're so driven, the thing is, number one, there's no black, there's no um, framework, okay, fair enough guys, but even if there is no framework, what are you doing? Let the passion fuel you, you know, so that you can actually do the thing, right? And so I think there needs to be an opening up of the industry in the sense that let's consider what other producers are doing. You know, because I, I'm not a filmmaker yet, I believe, but I produce other kind of content, you know? So then it just really narrows down the space and then I find myself having to explain myself every single time, you know? And I don't mind. I actually like explaining myself. Then it's a little bit of, a, of an education, right? So that's the thing is how do we, or, or what are some of the other opportunities maybe that I'm not seeing? Maybe that, like avenues that I haven't discovered, but from my journey, I've seen that only film is the thing that really is so big, especially in the Durban space. So how do you open that up? That's my Thank you. How do you open that up? How do we, you, know, you, wanna, you wanna answer that? Yeah. Um, sorry, uh, do you mean, uh, hi, is that, okay. Sorry, uh, do you mean, how, uh, no, she's not listening to Okay, um, in terms of opening it up, I think, um, I can't talk from a funding sphere, but I do know that it is tricky. Uh, like I did uh, sort of ask questions about how do we find, say, like we want to do a web series or something like that. Um, and it's not, it's not as easy as, say, getting funding for a short film or something like that because um, the mechanisms of distribution are different and, and I think that's something that we're starting to get into understanding. Uh, but in terms of opening up, like, um, I think like in my work uh, with film, um, I often get labeled based on what I'm doing at the time. So when I'm doing the 48 hour film project or I've just won the 48 hour film project or whatever, then I am a short film filmmaker. Um, and I'm currently working on a feature documentary that I've been working on for the last five years. We've just got funding from KZN Film Commission and NFEF, so we'll be going to production this year. So to those people who know me from those avenues, I'm a documentary filmmaker. Um, and then I work with um, my colleagues who are dancers and so we did a couple of experimental dance films uh, trying to blur the line between uh, the idea of like a dance film being that you have people performing a dance and you film it um, and we actually sort of broke that down into like filming it the way that you would have filmed like breaking it down into scenes and shots and those kinds of things um, and for me it's sort of like the idea the, 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 the space of storytelling and creating, um, it's, it's, we're in a time where it's blurring. Um, like, w TV and film used to be very strictly defined. Um, TV was one thing, film was another thing, TV was known to be not such great quality, and that kind of thing, but now you see the kind of TV shows that we're getting, a lot of the big name actors are moving into shows. Um, the, the way we consume media is changing, and I think that on that level of creating what you want to create like you just put yourself out there like don't limit yourself to the definitions of oh I am a fiction filmmaker and so this is what I do well I'm a documentarian so this is what I do at the end of the day we're, we're I guess we're all united on a drive to tell stories on a drive to share 
um, and create. And I think that I think that like this is an interesting conversation to carry on in terms of how do we further blur those lines, but then move into how do we then create like take this conversation to the funders and to the distributors to kind of help us take these different ways of telling stories on to the next level. Yeah, in, in, adding, in adding to what you were saying, um, I, I just like what Atsakumbika, uh, Jerome. Yeah, put Jerome, spoke about the white paper. Um, the Film Commission, if you read about the Film Commission, the Devon Film Commission, the policy is very clear and is very supportive of the industry and the culture within film and television. Um, but sometimes I do worry that that policy does not become practical. And I think that's where your problem is, is at. Um, it's supposed to be supporting film and television. It does on other television programs. So now, like we, like we spoke about the white paper, we then need to get to a point, I think, where everybody comes together, together with the stakeholders, like you said, and sit down and really come up with a way forward of how we lay out this white paper so that it can speak to them and to us at the same time. And people like you will then be able to say, in this kind of like genre, this is what we need. Because what, um, um, what has been presented here, you heard that there's 130,000 for amateurs, like five films that are going to be made, and only about 2.5 2 for two films, right? For two films. It's problematic that. We didn't have to, we have to look into it. If maybe we have to go to speak to the Department of e Economic Development and say, hey, we need more expansion. Give more money to the Film Commission so the Film Commission can be able to accommodate all the genres within the video and film. And then we also have to look into the role that the NFVF is playing. The NFVF is a national film video foundation. Uh, they're still using video, I don't know why. <laughs> Nobody uses video now. <laughs> but um, do they have an office here in KZN? And if not, why? Why not? Because when they present their budget, they're given the budget for the whole nation. And KZN is part, it's one province that is part of that budget. So how do we then rope them in? So maybe we need to, Lozugo, to take this further in terms of inviting all the stakeholders even the IDC needs to be part of this. And then we also come, and then we draft that white paper that can speak to us and also speak to the stakeholders. Okay, one last question. There you go, Maji. Here's your platform. Samuel, my friend. I'm going to to Vera Clothing. Okay. Yeah, bang and umabe kulmango wut uh sing a ham bis ye ecoli because I'm a tuba call the tegwin and it takes a cooling a cool mo kulmang clothing. If we are a project house co was rock was a bonin says was the sabans and we can't take a cool. So being Christian Jude Bank and Sell up would sing a was with snow pum yango, who the squads with this bonny but as it was very TV. And the Ogus B Gitanda or Yang Tinta Kulokonyo put Anton, Ugut Gupleb Diamond Bebe Corner, because Nyakumura Kulum is a south coast, a polyduat, La Kona Kona, or a soap, a Shutakon. One of our words is south coast, which is in Yinte, but Yazora could put nine crime because Abadaba Ning, Banungena, and Banjojel, like Abadas of Vashelacon. Of which Indian Tinta Kulun, Aunya, Galoana is Obona, Kakul Abafuet, which ends in Yagit. Because Babe and Yayo, of which I think Babe are my extras, you know, we own a film, but you want to sell Kulu Bona in the EPA by a Bayashi Jangayo after the Tole Ituba, the Bassabens, the Yoni Black Diamond. But to get even Tandu Bona Kulu, if it happens, you would maybe Bassabens, the Rakuin, the Samakai, because Sinashkangin, the Samakai, 
ukuthi uma sebe hamba ungaku ukuthi bekhona bakushiyayo maybe okuyisitifikethi esincane okuzokhombisa ukuthi inciswa zike zaba incane yomsebenzi ukuze maybe zikwazi ukuthi ithola amandla ukuthi iqhubekele ziphambili if it happens ukuthi ngelinyilanga kukhona abanye abaqhamukayo bezosebenzela khona maybe bakwazi ukuproduce lawo ma paper ukuze bakwazi ukuthi babe incane iyo iminye imsebenzi eqhamukayo kwini ngiyabo ngakhona Okay, a uh, round of applause for our wonderful speakers. You guys killed it. Okay, one's missing. You guys really killed it. A round of applause for you guys. Thank you for coming through. My job is done. If you take one thing from this whole thing, I'd just like to quote my dear friend Umtunzi, just get on your knees and blow. Like, just push it, just push it, man. Don't ask questions, get on your knees and blow. But uh, in closing, I'd like to call the one person that put this all together, Luzugo. Yep. Okay, <laughs> um, guys, um, you know what, um, the idea came because I see, you know, I predict sometimes it, uh, it, it does happen, whatever I predict. I see a future in Devon. In the next 10 years, we're going to have 10 projects that are playing Mnet, ETV, SABC1. And it's now, if you look at Ihostela, is running what? Mzanti Magic. If you look at Uzalo, uh, is running what? SABC1. If you look at Mbeu, is running what? ETV. So that is why I'm saying I see a future in Devon. And you guys, you need to be involved in that future. So that is the reason I actually came up with the idea. And you know, sometimes as you guys are saying, you need to make contact. You need to talk to people. You need to avail yourself. If I would, didn't speak to these people, if I didn't speak to these guys and, and say, guys, this is the idea I have, I don't think this would happen today. So it's more like take the challenge, um, make the first step, because no one is going to do it if you're going to wait. I don't care whether we had five people or two people who came through today, I don't care. What's important is the fact that they came and they wanted uh, to, to, to get information. We tend to want numbers, and sometimes you'll find that it's like an audition. We want numbers to come. Only two people, you'll find that they can act. In that thousand guys who came into audition, because you know the reason is why, they don't practice their craft. They just go to audition hoping that they're going to take me. But Umtunzi mentioned here and said, you need to practice every day. You can't be an actor who always rock up when there's an audition. All of a sudden, you know the script. Every time there's an audition, you know the script. But the whole time when you have auditions, you don't practice, you don't read the script, you don't do nothing. So I also like to do a shout out to my men there. They killed him on Sunday. All the ladies were, were, were crying. Hey, then you're wrong, my brother. You're very wrong. But I predict you're going to come back. Because I spoke. Okay, guys. So I would just love to thank every one of you who came through today. Um, Ushon, where is he? Mpo. Can you call Sean? So I just want to thank you guys. And uh, as I'm saying that I see a future in Devon. I don't want you guys to work for the next productions that are coming. I want you guys to build the, the business on your own. Don't say the next three, four projects that are coming, I want to work there. Say, us as a group, we're going to start the fourth project. Uzalo Imbeu, a hostel, another project. You guys, yeah, you need to start that production. And what, what makes me angry is that if you look at, uh, Sean, I'm going to call you now in a second. If, if you look at Imbeu, who's owning it? What experience they have? These guys have been in the game for a long time. They know the industry. In that team of executives, you don't have any young people in that executive committee or in that um, executive team. Why not? Because I want to produce, and I speak to these guys and say, I don't want to be just a worker. I want to produce. I want to play with money. I want to pay people. I want to hire people. Please. Let me be part of the team, because that's my passion. And you'll find that they always close the door on you because they don't want to share the information. So you guys, you have a potential. We are still young and we still have opportunities. These guys who are executives now, their time is over. They've been doing this for over 20 years, and guys, we don't have an opportunity. Once we have the opportunity, we need to pass the page to each and everyone here. And you know what? I see talent, I see um, um, actors, 
guys I've worked with, on small productions. And I'm happy they are here because we used to have these conversations um, back in the days. I was like, daughter, you're going to take the industry. And it happened. So you do have these conversations and you guys, you think we're playing. And when it happens, people think it's just luck. You work your way up, guys. I'm sure Umdeni will attest that he, he used to do community theaters, and it was hard. He used to sleep on the street. There's always a story to tell, a struggle somewhere, somehow. So if you expect that, it's going to happen just like that. So this is not your industry. You're gonna ask, you come out of a city, you come out of after, know that they're going to cheat you. They're going to play with you. But Umtunzi said, as long as you have one leg inside. And also make sure that you have information. So, guys, I'm hoping you, you're going to come, because this is a movement. This is a, not a once-off thing. We're going to do it next month. So, I'm, I'm just going to publish it on Facebook. It's Durban Filmmakers in Conversation. Facebook, Durban Filmmakers in Conversation. We're going to do this monthly, every last Thursday of the month. It's not a once-off thing. So, here's, here's the idea. Who put this book of a paper tray? What are we going to do? I have my younger cousin there who's sitting at the corner. He was taking all the ideas that we were talking about. We're going to have a, a, a booklet of all the ideas. After four sessions, we're going to have Indaba where everyone comes, we speak about the booklet and we see if the ideas are the right ideas. We take those ideas, we piece them to Deben Film Commission, we, we at Deben, Deben Film Office, uh, and also KZN Film Commission. We take these ideas from artists, not from them, because we tend to take uh, the instructions from them, but we are the ones who are creative. So we need to tell them this is what we want. If it doesn't happen, they need to suffer the, conflict, uh, the consequences. Because government give them money, and we, have, we need to have access to that money, because it's ours at the end of the day. When uh, we treasure whoever is doing finances in the um, 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 in parliament, when they say they give 10 billion to filmmakers in South Africa, you guys have access to that money. It's yours. So we need to have strategies to get that, that cash so that we can produce more movies. And guys, my worry also is, I need to mention this in tunes. I think um, Tony mentioned it uh, just a bit. Let's not also focus on TV only, because what I've realized, working on TV, creatively we are suffering. Let's also focus on features, guys. That's where creativity, that's where you can express yourself. Because in feature, you, do, you shoot two scenes a day. So you have enough time to be creative. But in television, guys, we suffer a lot. Um Tunzi can't direct as much as he wants creatively. Because there's money that is being lost a day. Actors can't read scripts and prepare for scenes and say we need 30 minutes to prep for this scene because producers are going to say we don't have time. But in feature film, you have enough time to do that. And create, creatively, we can express ourselves. So let's not only focus on TV. Because TV is killing us, is killing our creativity, to be honest with you. It's really, because if you go to this production and you work there, we work six to six. And our terms are filmmaking terms, not television terms. There's a difference between a feature and a television. We work six to six, but we're not paid um, according, according to the Jews. So we need to be aware of that. The six to six is not for us in television. We're supposed to do eight, six or something, or eight, five, because it doesn't allow. The money we get paid doesn't allow the time we, we spend um, on, on, on these productions. So I just want to thank you every much, uh, everyone for coming and I'm hoping guys you're going to support this movement. It's not mine, it's ours. And um, thanks to Uput Fezile for coming through. Thanks to Umtunzi for when I called him, he was like, I'm in. The first moment I called him. So as much as now he's making money, but he's still available. <laughs> um, thanks to Chanel. Chanel is, a, is a, she's our editor at Imbeu. And um, she, I, I like it because she's more independent. She has that mind of, I am going to do it. She doesn't wait for anyone to do that. So that's the reason I invited her. And uh, to Nerina also, Nerina is the same as her. She's big-headed. She's going to tell you to, to, to get off if she wants to. I, I like those, the kind of minds that they had. And also to Tony. You know, for me to approach Tony was not easy because remember, guys, he's a legend. You can't run away from that. We all watched him. And you know, I still give respect to the legend and I give respect when it's due. Uh, just because I work with him, it doesn't give me the right to say he's going to do this. 
uh, it was not easy for me to approach him because he is a legend and we need to actually celebrate him and stop celebrating our legends when they are dead. So we need to celebrate him now. In closing, guys, yeah, my boy. So, <laughs> you, you know, um, Urafael, since last year I've been doing a workshop. After students are here, they know me. I'm, I'm very strict when it comes to uh, information. So I do workshops and I teach acting, I teach producing, um, I teach the business uh, in filmmaking. So last year I was busy uh, doing sessions with them. Rafael came through, he shared his story, and they liked him more than me. I don't know. <laughs> So that's the situation. You start something and they ended up loving someone else. But anyways, Donna, thank you very much. There's a lot we're gonna do together. So let's let's hold it tight. Um, another thing, guys, that I wanna do is please go to the Facebook page. Please comment. I know the challenges that we face today. Um, there's a lot of noise at the background. I've noted that uh, people are talking here. We hardly hear them. So. We're gonna fix these issues. Sound system, I think we need to add more speakers so that we have a speaker there. We have a speaker there so that guys, we audible. If we are giving information, at least you guys can hear us. But if there's anything that you feel like we need to improve on, go to the Facebook page. I mean, I like it, criticism. I'm not gonna cry. If it was a fucked up thing, you feel like you didn't feel it, say it. Say this thing was just a waste of time. Don't, don't worry, I'll, I won't take it personally, as long as it's going to help me to grow. So share your comments on Facebook. If you feel like we need to work more um, or, or, or with the guys the, in terms of presentation, tell us on Facebook. Even if it's live, people can see it, it's fine, as long as it's going to help us to grow. Um, you know, the reason I invited the clothing companies, uh, the designers, um, where you get, please stand up, man. So, he's one of the guys I invited, um, Devil Lyrics. The reason I invited them, guys, I wanted to warn them, because as much as you guys want to get into the industry, I don't want to watch every scene with a Tuvera sign. So you need to, if you want to get into this industry, create your clothes, make sure that not every cloth has a branding, even if it's inside. So that when um, wardrobe guys come to Unokonga from Uzalo, Mercedes from Imbiu, when they come to you and ask for your clothes, the problem is going to be the brand all the time. So if you approach them, do clothes which without the devil lyrics, but let it be inside, then your clothes, they're going to take them. Because imagine uh, every time we see Tony, he's wearing a Jubera, he's wearing a devil lyrics, then people are going to say, ah, no, this is fake. So uh, this is my advice for you guys to get into the industry. You need to do that. It's fine for you guys, your actors, to wear the signs and all of that. But business-wise, if you want to take these clothes to Woolworths, think about it. Because at the, at the same time, there's a copyright issue. People want to use your clothes, but they need a permission before they can use your clothes. I want to shoot movies, I need permission from you guys. So make sure you, somewhere, somehow, you find a place somewhere where I don't see the D or the devil lyrics. But I would know the credits of my movie will say, this is a Juera clothing or this is a devil lyrics. So that's the advice I have. So I invited you because of, I wanted to give you the advice and also I wanted people to see that we don't only deal with film, there's also the other side of filmmaking. You need to get involved in this industry. You need to own it in Devon. So, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say to you guys. Thank you very much. Um, we'll see you on the 28th, March. 28th March, and also check out Facebook, ne? Shut. Sean, 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 where is it? Sean! Come, come, Sean! Sean! Quit, 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 you can. Where is it? Gift, gift, where is it? 28th March. Uh, yeah, yes. My check, check, Facebook page. Right? We're going to show around. Sean, just. Um... Sorry, guys, um, Sean is the owner of the place. Uh, so he gave us permission to use this place. So Sean, thanks very much, man. Just two words. Thank you very much to you guys. We loved having you here, and I hope to see you again. On the 28th. March. No, we got something on, but we'll talk about it. <laughs> now, if I could get everybody to please go to the bar and have at least a tequila stunt bag. I've got, I've got my friend in the back there, Andrew. 
Andrew's gonna show everybody how to do a tequila stunt, man. <laughs> I hope you value your nasal passages. <laughs> All it is is snorting salt, putting lemon in your eye, and drinking some tequila. You'll be fine. Right. Sorry. So, so, oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing, one more thing. Can I have ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, oh. Jones Gibbs, come here. Lucy Go, Lucy Go. Lucy Go, please come here. 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 Hey, Menga, Menga is gone. Guys, Tony, they're all gone. But guys, there's one thing about this guy that never tell me honest with you guys. Can I tell you something about this guy in front of me? They never told you that they started cleaning toilets and now the way they are right now because they got passion about everything what they do in their life. You know, you need to start somewhere else, you need to end somewhere else. Everything you can come easily, you need to work for it. Thank you guys, thank you guys. Yes, my name is uh, Niki Tony. And my name is Faibi. I'm a script writer. Uh, tonight I've learned a lot of things. Firstly, this meeting that we had here, organized by young people, was very inspiring. Very, very inspiring. And I think, I don't know, it was too, what I see just, it was very, very, very good. And, it was uh, a great evening, and uh, we believe that uh, we'll take from there. Uh, what we learned, it was a good experience from the youth, or from the young people who want to achieve and who really uh, uh, expose uh, uh, what the challenges, the challenges they are facing, and uh, they are asking uh, to the uh, uh, relevant uh, institutional entities and to make it easy for everybody so that they can achieve. What I can say. Uh, for me, what I can say to say is that uh, the organizers. Yes, I'm really grateful for the organizers, the guys that organized this. There's a Luzo, also the Griffith, don't other their names. This was a very, very good. I'm hoping that in the future they'll do other workshops like this and I'll make sure I come, because this is very, very it's useful and it's teaching very well. I'm really grateful for what they did tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, just in short. In short. Okay. Look at you, Kay. Okay, just tell us your experience today and how important it is to have such an event. Uh, you introduce your name and send them first. Okay. And your experience today and what do you think that uh, people can learn from this? Um, my name is Pawan Lokhare and this event was... I took in more than I expected because it said filmmakers and I am more of an actor but I took in more than I expected as in the challenges and what to look for and how to bring myself to the industry so I do think that this is a fundamental event to come to for an upcoming actress or an actor or any creative in the industry to learn more about how they can break into the industry. Thank you. Thank you. That was very nice and short. Two, two, three. Who was about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sis, tell us on
Make up, please. Make <laughs> <laughs> up. Sure. Ben, do See the script, Okay, put uh, Justin J. Brief what are your thoughts on Jayanam Chanji and Abadu and Just give us your thoughts on Okay. Advice Okay. Three. Wow. What an evening. Uh, well, my name is Muzi Masego, uh, also known as uh, Ketcha. Um, well, this was a very wonderful evening, uh, informative. Um, we need more of this kind of uh, gathering. Um, uh, it was very in informative. In fact, uh, uh, every, each and every uh, artist or creative person who is around here in Devon, uh, this kind of gathering is not to be missed. Uh, I'm glad that I we were told that it's not happening for the last time. It's for the first time, but it's, continue, it's something that is going to be happening every month. So um, I can just invite everyone to, you, you won't regret uh, uh, if you come to this uh, uh, kind of uh, gathering. Um, yeah, that's all I can say. Thank you, sir. See you all. Thank you.